I watch some NBA games, uh, but I, I was, uh, you know, I watch more EuroLeague than NBA. Wait, did one of the best NBA players just admit that EuroLeague has a better regular season product? Of course, the NBA has an upper hand when it comes to the biggest faces and talents. So how come Luca prefers watching what happens in Europe? The EuroLeague is not known for marketing greatness either, but it definitely has some of the things NBA could be jealous of. Hear me out. First of all, I think it's safe to say that the intensity of an average yearly game is higher than the one in the NBA. While overseas we might see a more laid-back style of play for the first two or three quarters, in the Euroleague league every possession is taken extremely seriously, especially defensively. We see players like Branko Lazic making careers only by defending, pressuring the opponent's best offensive players full court, following them everywhere and maintaining physical contact throughout. He is not afraid to finish the game with zero points and four smart fouls in 23 minutes because his team signed him to do exactly so. Straight back to him, underarm style. And then they go inside looking for the mismatch. Foul committed on the ground, Branko Lazic. A similar stat line in the NBA? Well, you know it would get joked around a lot. Yes, free and D type of players exist, but their job includes scoring as well. They are great defenders that are hard to pass by on the perimeter and their length really creates a difference in covering the gaps, but the intensity might be in and out on any given night. This is mainly connected to the fact that there are 82 games to play in the NBA and only 34 in the Euroleague. Keeping the same intensity or motivation when you play back-to-backs or four games in five nights is pretty impossible. You occasionally see top teams getting blown by the worst teams of the league with the most recent example being OKC Thunder dropping 150 on the Boston Celtics without Shea Gilgis Alexander. It wasn't the tactics, it wasn't any exceptional performance. It was a pure off night for the Celtics which happens from time to time in the NBA. Man, up ahead it's Giddies behind everybody as he will slam it down. Commissioner Adam Silver has mentioned multiple times wanting to reduce the number of games to increase the intensity. Still, the NBA hasn't made a step in that direction yet, thus Yearly keeps the advantage in this department. Also, the current format here in Europe only emphasizes the importance of each game. On top of almost 50 fewer games, only 44% of the teams make playoffs in the EuroLeague, while in the NBA this number is 53%. Less games and less teams to advance sound like an incredible product for the spectator, while not so fun for the squads that participate in it. In fact, a few EuroLeague coaches have already complained about this format, but that's a topic for another video. Playing tournament from 7 to 12. Numbers are really not important, but we need to involve. Since in the NBA you have games almost every night, there isn't time to prepare something special for your next opponent. That's why teams keep the same defensive tactics throughout the season, even though it could mean, for example, a drop defense on Stephen Curry. As absurd as it may sound, this is the reality of the NBA. It's also connected to the fact that there are clear roles and clear starting five players that don't change depending on a matchup. Bruh. This is where EuroLeague is more flexible. Since we usually have one or maximum two games per week, each team comes up with a plan for every opponent. For example, Alba Berlin can use the drop defense one game and then come up with a box and one for 40 minutes in a regular season matchup against the star player of the competition. As a fan, it leaves you intrigued every week to see the defensive choices made by the coaches, who also have more impact on the outcome of the game this way. Also, some teams have such depth in their rosters that often it is hard to tell which player is the starter and which is the sub. Coaches like Ergen Ataman from FS have the luxury to choose from three very different centers depending on what's needed the most. The defensive guru Brian Dunstan, the stretch 5 Tibor Plyce and the post-up and pick-and-roll threat Ante Zizic. Their playing time varies significantly in every round, allowing the coach to impact the game directly with a simple sub. This was a deciding factor in the regular season and last year especially in the playoffs, with Ataman deploying Plyce much more in the quarterfinals and the final four. The German big responded with important freeze in crunch time. Plyce! Oh my word, Tibor Plyce! Can you imagine the third center on an NBA team getting any minutes and having such an impact every once in a while? Nope. Let's quickly take a look at the offensive side of the game as well. As yearly coaches prepare different defensive game plans, they do the same for offense too. Below average defenders in the Euroleague become targets every night with teams trying to involve them in every possession. That's why it is so entertaining for basketball junkies, just like I imagine Luca is, to watch Euroleague on a daily basis. Noticing these little patterns makes the game super exciting. I'm not saying such phenomenon does not exist in the NBA, not at all. 
but it is much more emphasized only in the playoffs where you start to see things like Phoenix attacking Doncic in literally every possession or the Mavs responding by putting CP3 in every pick and roll. In the ball, the spinning Brunson. They're gonna make him work. They are just gonna tire out Chris Paul. Until that time of the year, it's usually more just executing your offense the best way possible and flowing with the result. Last but not least, the fan experience. With the pandemic behind our backs, EuroLeague has to offer one of the most insane atmospheres in whole sports. Belgrade, Athens, Piraeus, Istanbul, Konas, Tel Aviv. There is an extra show happening around the court every time you tune in to watch. It makes the viewing experience experience that much more spectacular, even if the score is not close. As you can see, the EuroLeague's regular season has so much to offer. The top talent is still in the NBA and will always be as it is the best league in the world by far, but the smaller number of games, the intensity and the amount of tactics involved each week make it an amazing product. Luka Doncic agrees and the only thing left to do for the EuroLeague is to sell it better. Do you agree guys? Is it more interesting to watch the EuroLeague than NBA and why so? Leave a comment, like the video and I'll see you in the next one.